social psychology has found application in many important areas like health, work, environment, etc. The application of social psychological theory and research has also been done in the field of law, criminal justice and rehabilitation. Social psychology is the study of human behavior in social settings. Since criminal behavior occurs in the social setting, the criminal justice system works in the society too. Social psychology plays a very important role in understanding the area of crime as well as law. Perspectives on the origins of criminal behavior. The following are the various perspectives on the origins of criminal behavior. Biological theories. Biologically based theories view criminal behavior as the result of genetics, psychophysiology and neurological functioning. Studies of genetic influences have noted a greater preponderance of criminals among sons whose biological parents were also criminals. The finding that males have a greater propensity for physical aggression than females has been attributed to higher levels of testosterone and the presence of an extra Y chromosome XYY. Sociological theories. Sociological theories attempt to explain crime in terms of various societal factors like social class, poverty and social inequity. A person's socioeconomic status, education, occupation, income and neighborhood characteristics are related to variability in criminal behavior. Lower socioeconomic status is associated with a higher rate of crime. Subculture theory by Wolfgang and Farachuti 1981 states that individuals who engage in criminal activity are conforming to the hedonistic and destructive values of lower class culture. Social psychological theories. According to Bandura's social learning theory, Criminal activity represents learned behaviors that have developed through a person's interactions and experiences with the social environment. A general personality and social psychological model of criminal behavior developed by Andrews and Bonta states that the likelihood that a person will engage in criminal behavior is increased by the presence of risk factors in his or her life. Eight categories of risk factors are proposed. An early age of onset for antisocial behavior, temperamental and personal characteristics conducive to criminal activity like impulsivity, aggressive energy. Third, antisocial attitudes, values and beliefs Association with pro-crime peers and isolation from non-criminal associates, negative parenting and family experiences, low levels of school or vocational achievement, poor use of leisure time and low levels of involvement in pro-social leisure pursuits and abuse of drugs and or alcohol, antisocial attitudes and criminal behavior. Andrews and Bonta identified five elements that comprise an antisocial pattern of attitudes. High tolerance for deviance, rejection of legal authority and institutions, use of cognitive distortions to make one's antisocial behavior acceptable, interpretation of many environmental stimuli as a reason for anger and antisocial thinking. Antisocial peer group and criminal behavior. The influence of the peer group can manifest in either of two ways. Through a relatively casual and time limited association with delinquent peers or through long term affiliation with other antisocial youths. Adolescents who follow the first path are termed as the adolescence limited group 
and those who follow the second path are identified as the life course persistent group according to Moffitt. For adolescents limited individuals, antisocial behavior is limited to the teen years. For the life course persistent group, the influence of the delinquent peer group follows a more lengthy and complex developmental pathway. Effective treatment of antisocial behavior involves targeting the factors that lead to these criminal behaviors like antisocial attitudes, beliefs and peer associations as well as family factors. The multi-systemic therapy for seriously violent youths targets the social systems in which young people are embedded like family, school, peers, neighborhood etc. Appropriate targets for prevention and early intervention strategies include young children who show signs of aggression and poor social skills, providing parent training in the use of inductive discipline techniques rather than punitive discipline techniques and the school environment to support children who display academic or behavioral problems social psychology and the legal system. Following are the main areas which involve the relationship between social psychology and the legal system. Eyewitness identification and testimony. Eyewitness error is the one of the main causes of wrongful conviction which results in the victimization of many innocent individuals. Three psychological processes are involved in eyewitness identifications the acquisition, storage and retrieval of information. Acquisition is the process of perceiving and interpreting information. Storage is the process of keeping acquired information in memory. Memory for the event plays an important role in the legal cases. Finally, retrieval is the process of recalling information stored in memory. Social psychologists distinguish between two groups of factors that affect eyewitness identification, estimator variables and system variables. Estimator variables involve the factors related to the eyewitness or the situation in which an event was witnessed. For example, viewing opportunity, the distance from which the witness saw the event the race of the witness and the perpetrator, etc. System variables are factors that are under the direct control of the legal system. Examples include biases in police lineups, suggestive questioning by the police, etc. Estimator variables include viewing opportunity to acquire accurate information about an event, the witnesses need to be able to see and or hear it clearly. Witnesses are more likely to identify faces correctly when they are able to look at them longer and when they are able to devote a greater degree of attention to the faces during the acquisition phase. Stress and arousal. Individuals who witness crimes often experience stress or other negative emotions. This can interfere with the perception and memory of the event. Weapon focus. The weapon focus effect has been demonstrated in several studies. The weapon focus effect occurs because witnesses trying to assess their level of danger keep their eyes on the weapons. In addition, the novelty of weapons may draw people's attention. Own race bias. Witnesses tend to be more accurate in identifying individuals who are members of their own race rather than another race. This occurs due to the outgroup homogeneity effect. Research suggests that cross-racial contact diminishes the own race bias. Retention interval. Retention interval is the amount of time that passes between witnessing an event and making identification or providing testimony. The accuracy of eyewitness identifications decreases with time. System variables include suggestive questioning. 
a substantial body of research has demonstrated that the way witnesses are questioned influences not only the responses they provide but also their long term memories of the event. Even though some questions are not deliberately misleading but they may be suggestive. There are three major explanations about the effect of post event information on memory. The first is the overwriting hypothesis. This hypothesis states that post event information actually replaces the information that witnesses encoded about an event changing existing memories permanently. Another explanation is the forgetting hypothesis. The source monitoring theory suggests that people retain memories of both the original event and post event information but witnesses usually have difficulty with source monitoring. It refers to the process in which people determine where they acquired various pieces of information. Lineup biases. In police investigations, witnesses are often asked to identify a suspect who may have committed the crime. The identification procedures include show ups and line ups. Show up is a procedure in which a witness is asked to decide whether a single suspect was the one who committed the crime. In simultaneous lineups, potential suspects are shown at one time and the witness is asked to identify the perpetrator of the crime. In sequential lineups, potential perpetrators are shown one by one and witnesses have to decide whether one person is the perpetrator before seeing the next person. Assessing eyewitness accuracy. A useful method employed to assess eyewitness accuracy involves measuring the length of time a witness takes to make identification. Witnesses who identify a suspect quickly are more likely to be accurate than are witnesses who take longer to make an identification. Another approach involves witnesses separately identifying different features of the suspect. False Confessions Cassin and Reitzman identified three different types of false confessions. Sometimes people make voluntary false confessions. Coerced compliant false confessions occur when under pressure people admit guilt but they believe in their own innocence. Coerced internalized false confessions occur when people actually come to believe that they committed crimes they did not commit. Certain questioning techniques may increase the rate of false confessions. Minimization occurs when interrogators downplay the significance of a crime to make a confession seem less serious. Social psychology and the response of the criminal justice system. The police investigation. The main tasks are identifying possible sources of bias and error that occur during police investigations and developing procedures to increase the accuracy of the work of police officers. Interviewing witness, victims and suspects is one of the most important tasks involved in a criminal investigation. Sometimes a distinction is made between interviewing a witness or victim and interrogating a suspect. Self-fulfilling prophecies also play a role. Kassen and Kachel's study highlights the effect of the social context on eliciting false confessions. One of the most widely accepted techniques for interviewing in psychology is the cognitive interview. It involves asking open-ended and non-leading questions and using strategic silence, using follow-up questions and the interviewee's own words to phrase questions as part of good listening skills facilitate rapport, increase trust, etc. Witness identification of suspects. It is important to develop lineup identification procedures that reduce eyewitness errors, especially false identifications. Based on a prodigious body of social psychological research, it is now well established that witnesses are prone 
to making errors in judgment under certain circumstances. The cross race effect is a well established phenomenon that refers to the tendency for individuals to be better at recognizing and identifying faces of their own race rather than faces of a different race. The courtroom. A lengthy police investigation led three men to be charged with second degree murder in the beating death of Matty Baranovsky. Under the adversarial model adopted in North America, Britain and a few other countries, two sets of lawyers, one for the defense and one for the prosecution, present their arguments, questions, witnesses and make their case before a judge and perhaps the jury. In contrast, the inquisitorial model adopted in some European countries such as France, the court takes an active role in the investigation of the facts of the crime. Since the publication of Hugo Munsterberg's book on the witness stand, Essays on Psychology and Crime in 1908, applied psychologists have been actively involved in conducting research on the courtroom. Social psychologists have been particularly interested in understanding the social processes that take place within the courtroom among the lawyers, judges, witnesses, defendants and jurors. There are three issues that are important to understand how jurors think and behave as individuals and as members of a group. Jury size. Drawing on research at the time, including Asher's classic studies in conformity, the Supreme Court erroneously concluded that a juror in a 5 to 1 split faces the same pressure to confirm as does the juror in a 10 to 2 split. Juror Impartiality Widmer and Schuller identified four types of juror prejudice. Interest, Specific, generic and normative prejudice. First, interest prejudice refers to a juror having a particular interest in the outcome of a trial. Specific prejudice occurs when the juror holds attitudes or beliefs that might interfere with his or her ability to be impartial in a particular case. Generic prejudice refers to possessing attitudes that might interfere with an unbiased evaluation of the evidence. Finally, normative prejudice refers to a juror believing that there is such strong sentiment supporting a particular outcome of a case that his or her ability to decide the case impartially may become compromised. Inadmissible evidence Inadmissible evidence refers to the testimony or other evidence that fails to meet court rules governing the types of evidence that can be presented to a judge or jury. The main reason evidence is ruled inadmissible is because it falls into a category deemed so unreliable that a court should not consider it as part of deciding a case. Prisons Goals of prison Prison serves many functions, the most important one being to protect the society by removing a criminal from the society which is also a form of punishment for the criminal. This function represents the goal of incapacitation. Other goals include general deterrence for society, specific deterrence for the individual, rehabilitation, denunciation and retribution. Social Climate of Prisons The Stanford Prison Experiment by Zimbardo was a powerful demonstration of how social rules influence behavior. In this investigation, 21 healthy male volunteers were randomly assigned to one of two roles, a mock prisoner or a mock guard. After being arrested at their homes, the prisoners were taken to a mock prison constructed in the basement of the psychology department building at Stanford University. They were then placed in cells and were washed over by the prison guards. The results were shocking. While playing out their roles as guard or prisoner, some of the guards became increasingly abusive and cruel, using degrading forms of punishment. 
the prisoners experienced various negative psychological effects including fits of rage and acute depression. As a result of this, the experiment was stopped after only 6 days although the original plan was to make it last for 14 days. The Stanford Prison Experiment showed the power imbalance that exists within a correctional setting and its potential for abuse. The harsh conditions of prisons including poor sanitary or health conditions, overcrowding etc. have negative effects on the prisoners. Prison Approaches to Rehabilitation Jones developed a number of principles on which the traditional therapeutic communities were based like democratization, communalism, reality confrontation and peer group influence. A therapeutic community is a holistic residential environment designed to promote the personal growth and development of the residents. The main aim is to change attitudes, beliefs and behaviors that lead to a healthier and more adaptive lifestyle on return to the community than the lifestyle due to which the person was admitted into the facility. The core concept is living, learning as a therapeutic community adheres to the principles of honesty, openness, self-governance and learning from individual's efforts to live together. Therapeutic communities help offenders in experiencing a setting that models a cooperative pro-social environment. Social Psychologists' Contributions to the Legal System The following are the contributions that social psychologists have made and continue to make to the legal system. Expert Testimony One of the most common rules for social psychologists is to share their knowledge through expert testimony. Social psychologists frequently are asked to testify about research findings in order to give judges and jurors a framework for understanding and evaluating the evidence in a particular case. Amicus Curiae Briefs Another common role involves Amicus Curiae or Friend of the Court Briefs. Amicus Briefs summarize relevant psychological bodies to provide judges information for deciding a particular case. Criminal behavior is a social act which involves violations of socially defined laws. Some crimes are committed against people directly called violent offenses like murder, robbery and non-violent offenses like fraud, voyeurism etc. Criminal acts may be viewed from a social ecological perspective that is as a result of an interaction between the person and the environment. This notion derives from Kurt Lewin's field theory that is B is equal to FPE meaning B stands for behavior, F is function of the person and E is the environment and the interaction between the two. Understanding the social psychology of a crime. Research on bystander intervention by Dali and Latane has shown that various factors influence a person's decision to assist in an emergency situation. The bystander effect states that people are less likely to help in an emergency when other bystanders are present. This occurs due to diffusion of responsibility and many other factors like attributions of responsibility etc. Research on de-individuation suggests that people under the cover of anonymity may deliberately engage in behavior about which they might otherwise be inhibited. For example, Zimbardo demonstrated that female research participants wearing Ku Klux Klan type hoods and outfits delivered shocks for twice as long to a confederate as did other research participants whose identities were revealed by name tags. Social facilitation refers to the fact that a person's performance on a well-learned task will be enhanced by the heightened arousal caused by the presence of others. Within antisocial peer groups, deviant behavior might be considered normative. According to the frustration-aggression hypothesis, 
Frustration may be a trigger for aggressive behavior in the presence of a new set of potential victims. Another factor that may influence antisocial behavior is the presence of situational cues that incite the behavior like proximal variables and distal variables. To summarize, the application of social psychological theory and research has also been done in the field of law, criminal justice and rehabilitation. The main perspectives on the origins of criminal behavior are biological theories, sociological theories and social psychological theories. The main areas of link between social psychology and the legal system are eyewitness identification and testimony, false confessions and prison settings. The main topics in the link between social psychology and the criminal justice system are police investigation, courtroom events, etc. The main contributions of social psychologists to the legal system are expert testimony, amicus curiae briefs, understanding the social psychology of a crime, etc.